Welcome back to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm yours, Jack, and in this particular video, we're going to talk about something new, uh, something a little different. I mean, I guess we've done a little bit of it before, but since my caller called in on Sunday's show on my Photoshop Elements live show, and uh, he brought up and started talking about Ubuntu Linux, and it started spiking my interest again to say, look, we need to get the message out and tell you guys about Ubuntu Linux or about Linux in general, what it is, why you would even want to bother with it, um, and how it may even bring some of your old computers back to life, and you can save a ton of money, <laughs> uh, tons of money uh, using Ubuntu. So I thought it would be fair to share that with you, and what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to show you how to settle up. I am on my Mac, and I'm using Parallels uh, as a virtual machine, now you can also use VMware, or there is also another one here. Um, I don't think I have it on my other computer either. Yeah, yeah, I do. It's called VirtualBox. VirtualBox is written by Oracle, and it's free. So you can put a virtual machine on your computer absolutely free and not harm your computer. You can also take, if you want to, you can also take the... Um, the Ubuntu you download is called an ISO format. And I know I did a video before with that on how to burn an ISO onto a CD and then boot from that CD-ROM. Uh, maybe we can do that again if you need more help with that. But uh, what that allows you to do is not destroy your computer the way it's set up and you can actually play with Ubuntu. What I don't like about that system is you can't really install things and play with it uh, like drivers and stuff it's really buggy that way it's just to look at the interface and say yeah I can point and click but load up on a VM because at least on a virtual machine you can play with it and also with parallels I'm going to show you how to load the parallel tools um, I don't know if it'll be in this video we'll see how long it's going to take me to bring up this uh, new system here but uh, we may be able to show you how to load the parallel tools if not here I'll do it in another video session so the first thing we want to do is click on the Add button here on Parallels. We're going to create a new virtual machine. And that's going to ask you where is this virtual machine? Is it in the CD-ROM drive? I mean the uh, install disk. No, it's not. I downloaded it. So I'm going to choose an image file. And just locate your image file. It's easier to do this, folks, than to burn it if you're going to put it on VM. Just run it right from the ISO. And all the virtual machine software out there will do this for you. Uh, let's see here where I did put it. <laughs> I think I put it down here under Windows software actually. Ubuntu is 10.10. .10. And I'll just click on Open. And now I'll click on Continue. Now, it's going to ask me for a password here for an Express install. Um... Let's see if that'll work out okay. Click on next. It's going to ask you what it is. I am going to put on here Ubuntu 10.10. The reason I'm doing that is I did see 11 point something, 11.4, 11 something is coming out. So we may want to play with that and uh, I'm going to sh definitely have a look at it. So I'm just going to set this up as Ubuntu Linux 10.10. Uh, you can share it with uh, other users on this Mac. I don't do that. Customize settings before installation. We'll look at those. Let's create it. <clears throat> now, I'll pull this over here so we can take a look at this. Pull this up. Uh, that's the name, CPUs, the amount of memory. We'll run up to one gig. We'll just make it a little smoother there. There's some options we can select here. And then we'll look at the hardware. Um, that looks good. We can uncheck the floppy disk since we don't have one any longer. So it's kind of ridiculous to even bother with the floppy disk. The video, um, 128 looks okay. Uh, enable 3D acceleration. We are going to play with that, so I'll leave that up. Hopefully it'll work. Uh, and I can show you the cool 3D effects with Ubuntu and how they work. Uh, the network is shared networking. It's connected, so that's how it should be. It's going to share it right across. You can also make this um, on the Ethernet or default adapter. What that allow you to do is actually pick up its own IP address. 
um, and work with that. And we'll talk about that later. Right now, we just want to get the machine up and connected to the internet so we can do its updates. So click OK. We can actually close this box out. We're going to bring our Ubuntu up here and click on Start. And that will start our install. And this is the same thing you'd see if you're actually loading it on an actual computer itself. It's going to be the same way. And if you're not familiar with a virtual machine, um, maybe I'll do a video tutorial. I could probably pull one off for the uh, um, the Oracle Virtual Box. And bring this back up here. This you see here is actually an extra firewall. You see this thing popping up on my screen. Uh, it's one of those don't pay attention to the man behind the screen. Remember the Wizard of Oz? Okay, it's copying files here, so it's pretty fast. Uh, the load up is pretty fast, and I've put this on quite a few machines. Let's talk about that for a minute. The way it could really save you money is you can load Ubuntu up on older hardware. Um, where, you know, Windows 7 is not going to work. We have a lot of that uh, in our job where Windows 7 is not going to work at all. You can also play around with it, and I'm going to try to play around with the remote desktop connection piece. So, I like to have Ubuntu boot up, and the only thing you have it, to have it do, basically, is just remote right out into a, um, into a Windows uh, server box or Windows XP box. That way, I can save money on that hardware. What I'm hoping to do is actually take a chip... And you know, you've seen these boxes, all these little virtual boxes. Basically take a chip, hook a monitor, keyboard, mouse into it, turn the box on, have it just boot a small version of Ubuntu. I'm going to play around with that. And get that small version to actually come up and uh, boot directly into my Windows Server boxes. That way saving a lot of money on hardware by not replacing everybody's desktops anymore. Um, so, and... There's a lot of ways we could do that. Or if you know of any ways, by all means, let me know. I'd like to hear from, from you about that and uh, see how that's actually going to uh, look and how it's going to act, I think would be uh, the way to say that. The hardest thing for me, once you get Ubuntu loaded on a Parallels desktop machine, is actually loading up the... Um, the parallels tools and Ubuntu comes with see this is saying uh, Shotwell photo manager so that's something actually new uh, there's a video editor you know we'll try to pull some video in there and play with that kind of stuff but um, Ubuntu has a lot of f great free tools that's another way it's going to save you a ton of money uh, if you go out and buy Windows, well, you're not, it's hard to find Windows XP. You can. I've purchased it recently from eBay for, for a client. So you can find Windows XP. But usually now if you walk in a store anywhere, it's going to be Windows 7. So um, so you're going to find Windows 7. And... To put that on older hardware is not going to be the easiest trick in the world. You're going to have a lot of issues. We did get it running at work on a on a Dell 2400 computer. Uh, and what we did, we upped the RAM in it naturally and put an extra gigabyte of RAM in it. So it runs pretty decent. Uh, we don't have too much trouble with that. But now I'm getting into more and more virtual type machines for people's desktops. You know, putting a decent server on the back end and then putting, um, just putting little desktop boxes. That way they really can't mess with them. There's nothing there. So if anything happens, it's very simple for me to just bring that, uh, just drop a new box in there. Because anything that's going to happen is the box could break. Let's drop that in there. But I think when I get my Ubuntu remote uh, package to work, what I'm going to plan on doing is just being able to boot that from a flash drive. That's all I really need. Boot it up from a flash drive. Have it boot up right to the login screen for the Windows uh, server box, and they can just log in. 
Okay, so we are going to... Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to take that long here, but... Um, so we'll just... Uh, let's just keep downloading. So at this point here, uh, it's loaded up. We have our new Ubuntu 10.10 .10 desktop. And click on here. It's going to ask me for that password I typed in earlier. And there we go. Now, what we need to do at this point is, as I said earlier, the first thing you need to do with either VMware, um, I'm not sure about VirtualBox, I would imagine, and I know Parallels, they all have a certain amount of tools that you have to install into the operating system. The reason we do that is so then you can interact between the operating system and the, what's called the host system. The host system is whatever it's riding on. Uh, we can see the update manager here just popped up. And these are the all the updates that we got to uh, put onto our Ubuntu install here. Uh, there's 302 uh, megabytes of updates. Okay, so we can install all these updates at one time. Um, I think that's what we'll go ahead and do. We're going to go ahead and start the install the updates to get those. Uh, you always want to take when you initially set any computer up, even Windows, or you set your uh, your Mac up, you know, with uh, OS 10 uh, point whatever you may be using, um, or if you're setting up uh, Ubuntu. Oh, excuse me. You always want to make sure it's all up to date. Uh, even your Windows servers, guys. Uh, if anybody's watching this that deals with Windows servers, keep those up to date also. Okay, it's very important. So we'll go ahead and install the updates here. Here's the, uh, it's asking for our password to make sure it's allowed to do that. And then it's gonna just start downloading and applying all the changes. Uh, you can hit details if you wanna watch the packages come by. You'll see all your packages coming in. Or you can close your details and just watch this bar at the top. There we go. The best way to install your parallel tools is that I found is to enable the root user account. Now every Ubuntu you install has a root account, but the thing about it, it doesn't actually have a password, so it's kind of disabled. So if you go under Applications, Accessories, Terminal, we're going to go ahead and enable the root account. So do a sudo, and then the password or P A S S W D and then root. Now it's going to ask you for a new Unix password. Give it a password. Enter. <clears throat> Type the same password again. Enter. And it has been updated. Now we can get out of there. Now what I want you to do <clears throat> to make it even easier to load these tools is we're going to log out as ourself. And we'll log in with that root account. So click other, root, and then now whatever password you made for root. Now if everything works out for us here, we should be able to open up our tools again. And open up our tools. Parallel tools. Open up our terminal once again. And then we'll just simply drag this right onto here. Then we should be able to hit enter. And now it's going to ask us if we want to install our parallel tools. Click next. Uh, this says we're going to do an upgrade because obviously we had them in here once already. Click next. And next we're going to install. Now it's going to wait and it's going to run the upgrade, or yours may say installing parallel tools. And this shouldn't really take too long to actually set these tools up on your uh, Ubuntu. Now once again folks, <clears throat> this is only if you're not doing a standalone computer here. We are actually uh, working at doing a... Um, 
uh, an install on Parallels, which is a virtual uh, environment on a Mac. Of course, I believe, now you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they also have Parallels uh, for Windows. Okay, so at that point, it is all done. I just hit Enter, and it's going to reboot. And Ubuntu uh, Linux 10.10 .10 is rebooting at this point. Now we'll just log in as myself, put my password in. Then there's the sound we have. You can now unmount the parallel tools. If you just right click on it, you can go down to eject. And hopefully, if everything worked out okay, we should be able to go to view. Now, Parallels will not let you do a coherence mood, mode. It'll do windowed, full screen, or mobility. We're just going to see full screen if it works for us. And there you go. Now we have a full screen Ubuntu 10.10. .10. Working very well. The sound's up, and now we can start playing around with it. To get back to the standard screen, if you just put your mouse to the upper left-hand corner and click on the window, it's going to window it and put it right back for us again. Okay, folks, so that's how you install uh, Ubuntu Linux. Don't be afraid of it. It's a very nice operating system. And we will dig more into the operating system here uh, in another video. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you back here on my next Ubuntu tutorial. Bye for now.